Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Son of Sam Chronicles. I'm Rocker Mike. Rob Rossi right there. Called an arrow. Bottom right square. Neo, back for a third show. Bottom left square. How you doing today, guys? Okay. Yourself? Everybody Fantastic. doing good? All right. Good, good. Well, where did we leave off last week? We were talking about uh, one of the, uh, what I think is is interesting part of this new data dump that came out earlier in the summer, okay, related to the Son of Sam, and that is the uh, the audio interviews done by uh, Queens DA, uh, Lifer, and, and Armienti. Um, and one of these that I thought was really interesting was the, the three cassette tapes that were recorded with Donna Farmer. Okay, now I think this might have been looked over, maybe kind of skipped by some people paying, you know, listening to these things. They maybe didn't give it much thought. Um, Donna Farmer was interviewed by by Army Enti, uh the first time on November 8th, 1979. She had answered, uh, she had called a, a tip line in 77 after the Moskowitz shooting and said that the, the the sketch, which was done by uh, Tommy Zeno, I believe, uh, given by Tommy Zeno, um, I think uh, she said it looked like somebody she used to know, a, an ex-boyfriend. And it was not acted upon during that time because they went right into finding Berkowitz not too long after the shooting. But in 79, when the case was reopened, uh, Armienti and, and Lifer must have gotten hold of this and decided it was something to take a look at. So, Neil, let me ask you first, what, what did you think of this? I know it's a little off the wall, not totally in the Son of Sam world, but I, I think it's good to talk about it in a couple, couple of reasons. What do you think? Well, I'm, I'm really focused on Berkowitz, and, and I didn't really you know, get any too, too many connections of Berkowitz in there. Um, There's none. There's no yeah. mention. Yeah. So it kind of was uh, getting a little boring to me running through it, but everything is important. Even, you know, to look at and talk about. Um, uh, I got out of this. The tip that she is giving is a lot of the tips that were given to New York police back during the shooting, you know, right. and um, as wild as she sounds, uh, times that by about 300 a week. You know, New York is getting all these tips in all week like this. And, uh, I think this shows a little bit why New York just wanted to get past this arrest and close the case because they didn't want these calls coming in um, like they were, taking up their men and their time and the taxpayers' money um, to pay attention to every one of these calls. You know, um, it was it was already killing New York and the department as it was going on. They just wanted to get ahead and go past yeah. it, you know. So um, listening to this kind of gave me a uh, inside of, you know, some of the tips they were receiving. and Where do they prioritize some of this stuff? How serious do they take some of these tips at the time? What do they pay attention to? Um, it's just very hard for New York to um, really uh, uh, take these tips and, and act on every single one. So, Well, the, the interesting thing I find, and Carl, I'll, I'll, I'll bring you in in a second, is, oh, is no. um, in 77, the police didn't act on this. Okay, at all. Uh, I sat there for two years until the case was reopened. But what happened in those two years? Well, the idea of multiple shooters or a cult or anything like that came out. Now, I don't know what the original, uh, you know, th what that original recording, if there was one that Donna Farmer made in 77, or did she just call and somebody jotted down some information? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. But whatever it was, these two guys, Lifer and Armienti, thought it was worth it to take a look at it because the position of the case had shifted a little bit towards the idea of, you know, a possible multiple shooter or, or cult. Okay. And I'm not saying either one is right at this point. What do you think, Carl, about this? What do you think? Well, I, I think you bring up an excellent point. Like, what did what did she say in I think it was uh, August August seventy seven August fourth yes. or fifth like mm -hmm. four or five days before Berkowitz uh, was arrested um, we, we do know that she she thought that the sketch that Tommy Zeno made looked looked like an ex boyfriend 
that that we do know, and that I guess that was the the essence of her uh, calling the uh, the hotline. Um, but what else was said? You know, did uh, I, I would like to know, and we probably never will, unless there's more tapes to be uncovered. But you know, uh, I, you you kind of alluded to it. Did she come up with the the satanic stuff and the pentagrams and uh, I forget the name of the group she had the children it's the circle of friends we'll go circle, into that a little bit circle of friends yeah you know, did she talk about that in August fifth and it's very to me it's very telling because if she did that puts a whole new spin on it if she, if if she just brought this up in uh, November of seventy seventy nine. Well, she had two years of being able to listen to, you know, TV news and newspapers. And uh, maybe, you know, it's possible that she took um, her base story of this guy's crazy and he owns guns and added all the the occult stuff to it because it fits it, it fit the, the, the Son of Sam narrative in 79. It didn't fit in August 5th. There was no talk of. You know, there was talk of multiple shooters, but there was no talk. So there was a bit of a conspiracy thing going on, but there was no occult stuff. Or uh, that's you know, yeah, that's what so. I think is is I think that's key with these particular tapes here. Okay, it, it, it's like, did she know about a, a cult just from right. the media, or or what? Okay, so let's break it down a little bit because there's some interesting little points. Mm -hmm. um, she said that the sketch uh, looked like her ex-boyfriend, Ivan Baragas, who uh, was like, I think he was a physical trainer or something. She ended up dating the guy. OK, uh, he wore pentagrams. His whole family wore pentagrams, she mentions. All right. In the first day. Uh, she also mentions uh, some other people's uh, Ron Silverman, Tony Farantino, Arthur Brown were part of a a clan she called it a clan okay and this is in the first tape where she sounds fairly together the second and third tape she's definitely off the off the charts Let but in the you, first this girl wants a wackadoo this person these were the people calling in the police non-stop with yeah. this stuff right uh you know what i mean uh, they, they, you know you ask why the cops had to just close and get out had to get There's back a to good normal reason. Yeah, this nonsense wouldn't, you know, keep going and go, waste, waste. I mean, I pointed this out. Look at the uh, the DA himself, Santucci. They let him reopen. Did we really get anything out of that investigation that connected to Berkowitz? Not really. You got information from him, which was needed also to, to you know, check off, you know, if you want to look at it like that. Yeah. You know, but as far as finding any breakthrough evidence with Santucci, I don't know if they really got that, uh, you know. But this woman was a hell of a storyteller. When she started telling that story and going into the witchcraft, she would talk about witchcraft. She would talk about all kind of weird stuff, even that she had a cat and the boyfriend snapped the cat's neck. And half of these people were judo, judo instructor. The other thing about this, they, was, they were having threesome. There were a circle of friends. They were all fucking each other. <laughs> <laughs> two one, two girls, one guy. What the hell? This 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 woman. Like, if I was sitting there, I would have been like, "You are not get the fuck out of my office." But he went, but they went it. back two times and talked to her. Okay, maybe she, she was went, a piece of ass. I, I don't know if. Well, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but Mike, you made a good point. I mean, it, it, um, and Carl, you know, this this devil stuff started to come up. Yeah. So yeah. how how you know, much? Here she is time, talking about this, you know. But yeah, how I, much by that time, Carl? Can you answer that? No, I can't. I mean, that, that that was my point, the whole thing. If, yeah. if she said this in the original phone call in uh, 77, um, it, uh, it, would, it would hold a lot more water. So now our question is, <clears throat> did she just read the papers for the next uh, two years and in 79 decided to, um, uh, you know, I mean, originally she called because <laughs> the sketch looked like a guy she used to date. Yeah, I did. Now, yeah. did she make all the, I don't think she, I, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> You guys are saying she's she's crazy. I mean, some of the stuff she's saying is crazy, but guess what? When you go into this, the occult and the satanic stuff, it's a not. lot of it's hard to wrap your hands around, and most yeah. people can't. Most people say, ah, you know, you're full of crap. That that stuff doesn't go on. Well, 
I think the four of us, uh, the four, at least the four of us, do agree that that stuff did go on. Now, is it related to Son of Sam? We don't know yet. You know, there, there's, there, I, I think so, but um, I, I know Neil can argue that, and uh, and he would be as right as I am. Um, but she, she, she was very detailed. Yeah, uh, and as crazy as crazy as you guys might think. I, I walked away from listening to those three interviews saying it's a crazy story, but I, I didn't really get the impression she's off the rails. I, well, I, well I, I've talked let, to let me just people. let me just say this, Carl. I, I, I am more on your side with this. OK, because I, I didn't think that she was that crazy. It sounds crazy. Right. OK, but they actually it's felt so it was enough to go back. Two times, two more times, right? And, and and talk to her for like about a half an hour each time and record it. And then yeah, in the and, third and tape, in the third tape, she that's when she mentions this circle of friends by yeah. by name, okay. But she also talks about you know being programmed to kill and then deprogrammed several times and programmed again. Uh, she was sexually abused as a kid. Uh, there were members. Uh, there was like a foster children thing involved with this circus of friends uh and also they all had belgian sheep dogs and there's a mention of dogs she had she had a, a german uh she shepherd, talked about german, german shepherd, shepherd also though, yeah. yeah yeah um and they were attack dogs because she talked right. about so, right yes yeah, so, so th this is um i just want to be, be clear be, before before anyone gets any strange ideas um uh, the occult stuff it, it, it's is I think is real. I think her story is real. Um, unfortunately, Berkowitz she she clearly states the, the name Berkowitz doesn't ring a bell at all. At all, um, yeah. So, but she knew somebody named Berkowitz, but it wasn't David. Right, but it's right. Not, it, it, yeah, Berkowitz is not you know yeah. it's not quite a, a like a Smith or a Jones, but uh, yeah. Berkowitz is is you know a fairly common uh, common name. Yeah. But anyway, um, it's unfortunate for you know if 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 you want to uh, promote the uh, the occult uh, son of Sam uh, uh, narrative, uh, it's kind of a shame that um, she wasn't able to tie in Berkowitz. But with mm -hmm. that said, uh, her story, even though there's different names, people's names, and a different group, it's kind of similar to what Berkowitz was talking about. I was commanded. You know, I was commanded to kill. Um, he's saying uh, he's saying a cult. He's saying, uh, you know, a 5000 year old dog, uh, you know, with various stories. She's saying, you know, a little bit of mind control and pro being programmed. So who knows? There might be something to that. Uh, I mean, it's way too early. Uh, and and I, I just I'll be honest with you. I just listened to um, the farmer tapes um, last night and this morning. Yeah. Um, and uh so I, I maybe I still haven't fully, uh, you know, uh, grabbed grabbed all the uh, the essence of it, but um, it it I, I, it is kind of interesting. Again, it doesn't bring us any closer to time. And, and, time and just just, it, just right, it, it didn't bring us closer. I mean, the, she was asked outright if she if she knew Berkowitz, she said no. Yep. Uh, if she knew the cars, she said no. Okay, uh, Ron Silverman. Uh, who was a you know an acquaintance or was that her husband? I think it was her husband at one point. Uh, you know, had Yonkers connections. That's all was said of that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also that uh, they would drink blood, okay, and have you know satanic rites, and the drinking of the blood was supposed to give them power. Yeah. Uh, and and Rob mentioned the group sex and threesomes and things like that. Uh, it, it, it's very similar to things that were said in the ultimate evil. Okay. Uh, but you know, it doesn't tie it in, but again, going back to the important point is, is this, this is what the cops had to deal with. Right. In 77, trying to get David Barclays. Oh, and whoever else could have been involved. Yeah. Sure. I, I remember, I remember back, uh, it was probably in the nineties and I believe it was Joe coffee. Um, might have been uh, Captain Borelli, but uh, th you know they stated. Uh, s s I'm going to paraphrase. I don't remember the exact quote, but it basically was like every nut weirdo on Wingding uh, was calling in, and any girl <clears throat> uh, that broke up with her boyfriend 
I yeah. were, were, the boyfriend was the prime suspect and the son of Sam in their eyes. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, you could, I mean, you can imagine like, you know, a, a guy gets caught cheating by his wife. Boom. She's called, she's calling the Omega task force. It's mm. like, the my nail husband's the son of Sam. That I think it's, you know, in some situations, I don't think people really cared. It's like, they, they just want vengeance um, to, yeah. to, you know, to the one that hurt them. And uh, at the time, Son of Sam was a good vehicle to use. It was a hotline, 800 number you could call to get your, uh, you know, your boyfriend in trouble. <laughs> and people did that, definitely. Yeah. I want to bring something up. So I was talking to a friend of mine, a cop friend, and he been, he was uh, he was in the force during this time. And remember, New York City was also murder capital. Like There were people getting mm-hmm. killed all the time. And he talks about something that nobody ever talked about. He would talk about, well, this was happening. There was a bunch of copycat killers that did a bunch of, they killed a bunch of people and they were like leaving letters, just like the son of Sam, just like to throw people off. So it was like a whole other thing. And he yeah. said, this is a lot of things that people didn't talk about. And most of these guys were pretty much killing hookers, which yeah. was another thing. Oh, they, were killing, easy target. they were easy target and they were killing them while they were giving a blowjob or something. So there was a bunch of copycat stuff like that too. And some of them would live a David Barker's letter. It was very freaking weird. He was terrible. He said, he said, and then he said there was so much, so there were so many cases that the New York City Department wanted to catch this and put a rap to it. So it uh-huh. might ease up the murder. He didn't stop murder. There were still people getting killed. But it ended the chapter, that whole serial killer, because they had to put, the, the New York City Police Department was under pressure to crack this case, end it, and get back yeah. to normal because people were scared, you know? Yeah, I agree. And I, I mean that goes that goes to uh, to Neo's opening statement. Um, you know, there's a re- I think there's a reason why. Uh, let's just assume that you, you know this cop story is true, um, and to a certain to a certain degree, I I, I believe him. Um, that you know there was copycat. Um, what a great way to if you want to commit murder, what a great way to do it is uh, kind of make it look like uh, Son of Sam, and, and uh, if you know you know you know. You know you're not the son of Sam, so when they catch the son of Sam, the murder you pulled back in May of '77, hey, <laughs> the, the guy, you know, it, it was probably him. So it's a, it was a great cover, and you know, speaking to to Neil's point, it, it's a perfect a, a perfect reason why the NYPD wouldn't advertise copycat killers, you know, because it, it's just like it's just more work for them, and yeah. the case just expanded. But I imagine also that there were secret things that the cops didn't tell that could they could figure out a copycat. Well, that right? that brings up a good point, but uh, mm. but I can you know I, I I can poke a hole in that. Uh, you're right, cops do they they hold back certain evidence, so when they catch a guy, if he knows the answer to it, they know they got the guy. But once yeah, which is once if there's two guys there. Yeah, which is why I didn't think that the interrogation yeah. was in the paper on the Voskarichian, because I don't see, I mean, I understand putting in the paper the incident, right? but I don't know why you would put in the person's interrogation. You were right, but that's why I kind of thought that that didn't happen. I don't see any sense out of putting the interrogation <laughs> into the paper, because, you know, like you just stated. Yeah, yeah. And and that's something that uh, cops, uh, I, I pose this question kind of like jokingly, but kind of serious too um what what happens if there's two people involved right and, you know you ho- hold this back and you know in this particular case we're talking about berkowitz and somebody else they both know that if they were both standing next to each other only one could have pulled the trigger but the other guy's standing right there so the other guy saw the same thing the shooter saw so he can answer the questions as well as the shooter and uh, I yet to get a good answer from a cop. And and the reason is there is no good answer because most crimes are not committed in a group uh, atmosphere, right? Especially murder. I think I, I think mo- most murders are you know one on one. Well, c- serial killers are very rarely done that way. They are usually lone lone shoot. There, there, there's a few out there that work. Yeah, no, there are. But uh, mm-hmm. but you're right, it, and it's you know. I, not not to sound you know prejudiced or anything, but it's it's usually uh, a white male in his twenties, you know, and, and Barkowitz certainly fits that fits uh, description. Yeah. yeah, but you know what's another thing that also that might have might have fucked him up because didn't his adopted mother die from cancer? 
Berkowitz? Yeah, you know, yes, you're right. I, I, I choose, and maybe I'm wrong, but I, I choose not to, um, not to dwell on, not to dwell on the reasons why Berkowitz did it. And the reason being is we have a hard enough time uh, getting and deciphering hard evidence let alone get into a serial killer's mind. I mean, there there's psychiatrists that have made a living delving into the psyche of a, a serial killer. So, you know, uh, you know, he, he wet the bed when he was five years old. He killed the cat when he was seven. He crushed a, 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 a I'm making this stuff up. You know, he, you know, he killed a, his mother's canary when he was 12. Um, I don't know. They say, you know, bedwetting and setting fires at an early age, uh, most or a lot of serial killers have those traits, but uh, you know what? There's also there's also people that that wet the bed and set fires and don't become serial killers. So <laughs> uh, you know, I, I would I, mean, I would think most, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, I mean, it's it's a good point. Uh, I don't mean to diminish your 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 statement, but um, how the hell do you uh, you know how how do we tackle that? I mean. I, I psychiatrists have a hard time tackling um, yeah. the, the, the answers to that question. So I, I choose to, um, I choose uh, so far anyway, I, 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 I've chose to uh, not really pay too much attention to um, the, the psychiatrist reports and stuff. But um, as I think we all agree um, until we have the answers, we really shouldn't shut any door and um, you know, and maybe, and I'm talking to myself now, you know, maybe I should pay a little bit more attention to like Abr Abraham's book and the letters that Berkowitz uh, wrote um, in, uh, you know, in, in prison early in, and in prison today. Um, there might be we might be able to glean some information. Um, oh, yes. You know, yeah, I, I, you know I just I just like to say I am not the expert. Uh, I've been involved in this longer than continuously longer than anyone else in the world. That doesn't make me an expert. You know, I know what I know. Neil and I were talking earlier, and uh, I just, I know what I know. I, I know what was in the Ultimate <laughs> Evil. You know, I know what was in newspaper articles. Um, I, I know um, the, the information that, that has been called from uh, from my own research and, and other researchers over the years. And now I know what the Queen's DA knows. And, uh, and that yeah. whole data dump that came out. Yeah. Everybody and, uh, needs to know that you didn't know this yeah. stuff before. None yeah. of us seen this. You right. didn't right. see any of this. Thanks. Give you yeah, a thanks, second Neil. to take it in and and see what's there, what you didn't see, which you should have seen before anybody in the first place. So you know, yeah, you need good. to people that's need to understand good. that you you know you you're not against this stuff. You just never knew about it. I'm new to it. I, yeah. I'm as new as every, anyone else. And and what. What people might not realize is uh, you pick how many years you've been involved in this. And I can tell you, not many people can say more than 10 that continues to have been involved in it. There, there are a few, there are a few, you know, few of Maury's uh, researchers who I'm still in contact with that have been involved. In but most people involved in the Son of Sam have been in it for two, three, four, five years. Um, I, I have 45 years of believing what I believe uh, and, you know, knowing what I think I know. And now June of uh, June of 2022, this data dump comes out and, and it just, this is a defense of myself. You can't expect me to go from 45 years of believing what I believed to, to a, almost a, not a totally, but a very different narrative that that the uh, this, these um, audio tapes and and the police reports. Um, I really wish, I really wish these things were released uh, by by the Queens DA and by the NYPD back in 1980. And I don't know why they weren't. Again, Neil and I talked about this uh, this morning. Uh, Berkowitz has already admitted to everything. He's in jail. Dude, yeah. I, I don't see well. There, there are a few reasons why the lawsuits didn't release we talked it. about the lawsuits, uh, yes. but I'm talking, you know, strictly from my perspective, um, my my life would have been totally different if I saw the if I saw all these audio tapes and and um, uh, the data dump and all the police reports. 
because that was in 1979, 1980. Maury's book didn't come out to 87. I met Maury in 94. Well, if I had access to everything what we're looking at in the last two months, by the time I met Maury, my line of questioning would have been totally different. I, you know, okay. there's, you know, there's so many things I could question um, that I didn't even know to question. You know, I didn't know I should question it until and, until I'm reading these um, reading these reports and listening to these uh, audio tapes. And uh, of course, we know Maury's no longer here, so I can't even ask him. But um, yeah, it, it's it, it's you know, it, it's been a lot for me because you know, if you if, I, I I can't even make an analogy, but if you believe something for 45 years of your life, and then one day someone says everything you know is not true, or you know. It's like, what do you mean it's not true? You know, yeah, so, you're uh, going to have to prove it to me. Yeah. Right. And yeah. and like I said, I've uh, I, I still haven't seen conclusive evidence to blow Maury Terry's theory out of the water. I have seen I, I have seen some stuff that makes me wonder. You know, it, it's like, all right, that that doesn't exactly <laughs> make sense. But, you know, one thing I I, I want to bring this up because I, I just saw it today. But one, one thing that uh, in my mind is cleared up is John Carr's death. Um, if you listen to the Linda O'Connor tape from yeah. 79, um, she clearly states that, um, uh, she, she states a whole bunch of stuff. You know, John Carr was in a good mood. He had his lucky charm on his Buddha, his Buddha necklace. Right. Um, she left the door, you know, she left the door locked. And, you know, um, and then when she came home, He's dead in the bedroom in the back room. Well, that blows away what Geitzen said in the uh, Netflix documentary. And again, Geitzen said this in 2017 about a case in uh, uh, 1978. She she said it a year after the incident. So, right. yeah, and just just a, a little tidbit. Um, uh, so. You know, a, a little tidbit to to uh, kind of show that these these tapes and these interviews and these reports um, are valuable, but they can't they can't stand alone because so, some of them blow Maury Terry's theory away, but mm -hmm. some of them actually uh, prove Maury Terry is right and, and force it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, let me ask you guys: Did anybody hear what his father had to say? Because I really didn't hear that. Because they got the oh, dad not, also, David not, Berkowitz. Not dad Berkowitz. Yeah. Yeah. I, did anybody did you, hear what he say? Oh yeah. What did he say? Like I haven't heard. Um, what do you, you know, think? you can you can look. Rosie did a whole video on that. You can look at that. She, she broke that down very good. If you want to check that out, um, she had a uh, maybe one or two on that. Oh yeah, you got to hear that. He was the closest person to to Berkowitz. You know. Yeah. Can Can you give like a? a quick, I will watch it, but uh, can you give? Can you break it down a little bit, Neil? Uh. It's been a while. I don't want to misinterpret it. You know, um, I would have rather brushed up on it real quick. Yeah, yeah. You know, but you know what? We I, can I, do that on the next show. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I did. Li I did listen to the tape uh, when when they first came out. I zoomed through pretty much all the tapes. But I'll be honest with you. I usually listen mm -hmm. to uh, podcasts and uh, and uh, shows when I go to bed. I put my ear earplugs yeah. in. And sometimes I lay awake for two or three hours listening, and sometimes I fall asleep in twenty minutes. I do um, the same thing. <laughs> I yeah, I did listen. I did listen to it, and the, the only thing I can uh, I can remember was he he wasn't very nice about his son. He you know he if I, if I remember correctly, he was he was a little not happy with his son, which I guess is understandable. Being your son was you know just. Uh, Pled guilty to killing six people. Yeah. In, in, in the da in the data dump that came out in June, you know his his audio was awful. You couldn't understand it. Oh, okay. You talk about Nathan Berkowitz, right? You yeah, talk, yeah. 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 Like yeah. I said, I'm not even sure if if I if what I'm referring to was in a written report or if it was in the in the audio. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, but I will let the uh, what's uh, crackling Rosie. Um, yes, she's great. Yeah. I, I've I, I've watched some of her videos, but for some I, I don't know. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. But all all the videos are like three or four minutes. 
Uh, yeah, she's kind of a quick hitter. Yeah, she sure. Oh, yeah, okay. I, I like, I get like I seven, eight minutes, something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was like a teaser. I'm like, well, where do I see the whole interview? Okay. I no, got no, she, she actually has done a really extensive timeline. Uh, I haven't really seen it myself and, either, but I, I think it's it looks very good, very detailed, very um, put a lot of work in there. So can right. somebody send me that. the link to her? I'll right. send it to you. Yeah, yeah, I'll send it to you. Another thing, Maury Maury Terry saws on this uh, tape. I didn't even hear what he said. I, I'm pretty interested. I, I, I want to hear the name, and I want to hear the. Well, we Terry. we so talked about that a little bit last week, Rob. When when uh, you know, uh, and and I and and just to. Let everybody know. Me and Neo have been talking for hour, two hours at a clip sometimes about all this stuff yeah. over the last few weeks. But and I think we talked about this yesterday. Neo is is I, I, I you know, you 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 were saying that you think that that conversation with with Life was contentious, right? That he was holding back. He was. I didn't like it. You know, well, like it. Where, 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 where I didn't. Where I, I didn't. I didn't take it that way. I didn't take it that way. I felt so what's that. What's the game then with him holding back the woman's name? Because he was worried about he was worried about his source. Uh, yeah, know, but he's he's source. asking the DA for help. If you know, he finally Santucci gets enough pull to open it up, and then he's not cooperating well, wait, wait, with them. Well, wait, wait, was he? He was okay, but in that conversation, you know, Lifer was interviewing him. Okay, it was what do you know, Maury? Okay, so right away, it's you know. It, it, they, I don't think they had a contentious conversation. A little bit in the beginning, maybe because he wouldn't reveal the source. But then the rest of it, they even laughed a couple of times. And, but even, and, even like gatekeeping Berkowitz. Now he asks, "Oh, yeah. you think uh, maybe uh, me and you can go see your friend?" No, right away. And it's like, you, you, well, you, you know, have to answer that, like that. But can you just go? Oh, you know, let yeah. me see. Let me see. Just say it. Entertain. But, but, just having some manners instead I, of I think, I, Yeah, but why? Why even say? Can you see? Because you know the answer is no. It's not going to happen. He was just getting Berkowitz's trust. How do you know? Berkowitz was an attention whore. He would have loved to see anybody that looks like now. Talk to anybody. Yeah. I mean, how do you because know? The questions, <laughs> because the questions <laughs> the yeah. questions would have gone down a road. Lifer would have asked Berkowitz stuff that there was no way he was going to answer. Uh, and he know. would have asked yeah. Maury's questions every question. Well, why couldn't Maury just ask Berkowitz, hey, you know, uh, this guy wants to come in with me. Do you mind? I, I could probably say Berkowitz would say, yeah, he's such right. a, a glutton for attention. But, well, I mean, he right away, no. I mean, but, it's like he won't tell the DA information. He's yeah. saying, uh, you know, now he won't let him go see the guy. Like, he's the decision uh, who goes and sees him. And I, I, I don't know. I don't know if, if, if that was. Well, what do you think, Carl? What do you think? You got something to say. I, yeah, I, I definitely have something to say. Because <laughs> I, I, I agree with Neil. A hundred percent on this point, and of course, I'm sure. I'm sure my my uh, my my next few statements are going to be taken out of context by other people. But so be it. Um, uh, I haven't. I've never wavered from this. Uh, I I was friends with Maury Terry. Did we get along all the time? Absolutely not. We used to fight tooth and nail. And man, if you went against Maury, he'd you know, he he was like the he was like the kid in the playground. If he couldn't pitch, he took his ball and bat and 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 went home. You know, <laughs> he, you know. So everything you're saying, Neo, is like I'm listening to you, and you're saying, "Well, you know, that doesn't sound right." And to me, I'm listening to the same thing as saying, "Man, that sounds so much like Maury." You know, Maury. Maury. I don't know if Maury ever said this. I'm I'm going to put words in his mouth. Because he definitely felt this was if anyone's going to solve the son of Sam, it's going to be me. Right. You know, and and he 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 was uh, he was bigger than life. His personality, uh, you know, um, you you like him, don't like him. It doesn't matter. And he certainly had enemies because uh, it was Maury's way or the, or no way. And you got a glimpse of that in the Netflix documentary, uh, I believe, in the fourth uh, the fourth episode. Um Got her name, uh, Sarah Wallace. Right, the the anchor from the, yeah now, back in the nineties. I tried to get a hold of her a while ago. I know I know the backstory, <laughs> and uh, her her I know the backstory from Maury's perspective. So it was kind of cool for me to watch the Netflix thing and listen to Sarah. And uh, to be honest with you, Sarah's story, her version, and Maury's story, his version of the same incident is is pretty pretty close. 
together. They, you know, she didn't want him into the quote unquote news circle. And he was desperately clawing his way in to get in. And uh, his ticket to get into that inner circle was information. And, and he didn't give information. Mm. You know, he used it as a chit. I'll give you some information if you let me in, you know, and I yeah. think he did the same oh, thing, okay. with, you, right. know, with, um, you know, with, uh, uh, with uh, her, with her lifer, you know, it, I don't think it was so much who was holding it. It was more of like, I'll give you something if you give me something. I know we did that with Dennis Dillon. Out in, uh, the, the, I can the, see uh, what you're saying. In Nassau County uh, DA, there was some, uh, there was some murders out, out um, in Ocean. Well, one was in Oceanside. Uh, Lindbrook, I'm sorry, and uh, uh, Fusco was was the, the the young lady's name, and uh, there was some satanic stuff to it. Maury, I don't believe Maury ever really tied it to Son of Sam, but he was working with uh, Dennis Dillon, the uh, the Nassau um, the um, DA, and uh, he, I know he did that with him. You give me a little, I'll, you know, and I'll give you something. So I, I you know, I, I'm not even going to say if it's right or wrong. Um, I guess we all kind of do that in life, right? If you want something and uh, the person doesn't want to give it to you, you give a little to get a little. And I think that's what Maury was doing. And again, I think it hindered the case. You know, do in, you think uh, so? In, in, in several several instances, yeah. I mean, bottom line is Maury, Maury passed away. He knew he was he knew he was dying. He had enough time to make a will. You know, set things up with Josh. Set things up with his nephew. Um, so, but you know, there's some things missing there. What else would you want to set up if you're if you're if you're the the uh, the, the father figure of the son of Sam case? Wouldn't you want to set something up? Maybe he thought he did giving Josh everything. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, no. You know, uh, to be quite honest with you, um, I I kind of wish, and I've said this before, I kind of wish he, he gave me uh, he gave joint custody of of his mm-hmm. files. You know. Give me a give me a set. Give give Josh a, I I wasn't gonna make a documentary. I wasn't gonna make a movie. But uh, being I being I'm a you know a survivor of the shootings and uh, and I've and at that point I had spent twenty some odd years with uh, working with Maury. Um, you would think I would be privy to the information. Um, I wouldn't have to ask or sign an NDA or you know. But that's not the way that's not the way it happened. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah. So in that in that respect, I I think more more he did hinder the case. I mean, it, he went to his grave, and what do we got now? We, we, you know, a lot of confusion. A lot of confusion. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that he was asked by the the Nassau DA to help on that case because of the occult stuff in that case? Yeah, it's, that's a good question. I don't know the answer. I don't know if Dennis uh, Dillon contacted him or vice versa. Um, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, you know, how many people were dealing with that kind of stuff at that time and had written a book about it? You well, know? Yeah. You know, the, the, actually, you know, uh, with that statement, it, it, I guess it is possible that then then is still and said, Hey, this, you know, this guy's into this whole satanic thing and the son of Sam knows about stuff. And, and this was definitely a, a, some kind of ritualistic uh, murder. I forget, I forget the details. Yeah. But uh, I know she was found um, uh, in a cemetery uh, in um, in Limbrook. I seem to recall that. Was wasn't that mentioned in the Zeman documentary? Uh, I, I think very, very I, briefly. I, I do know her. Her her name was Fusco. I don't hmm. remember her first name, and it was across the street from um, a, an indoor skating rink. Right. Um, pretty pretty short. Pretty sure it's Limbrook, but. Hmm. Um, Maury did investigate that, but again, did did he instigate instigate that? Now, Dennis Stone would be involved because it happened in Nassau County, and he was the Nassau County DA. Um, but but it, I I don't know who contacted who. Okay, let's uh, let's shift gears here for one second. Sure. Um, Neil, we were talking yesterday, okay, and I thought about the conversation after. And I wanted to bring this up because I thought it, it could be interesting conversation. Hypothetically speaking, throw, throw a hypothetical out there. 
If this case had gone to trial, remember we were talking about this? Mm -hmm. Okay. If this case had gone to trial, um, what do you think, disregard the, uh, the illegal seizure, and seizure, search and seizure, search and seizure, couldn't get the word out. Okay. Of the car, leave that out. Let's pretend it never happened. Okay. Do you think, and Carl, I'll ask you too, do you think he would have been guilty of all the, all the murders? Do yes. you think, Neil, I'll ask you first. I do think so, yeah. Okay. I think everything would have went down the same as he cooperated, you know, so yeah. If it had gone on trial, they would have had a look at each one. Right? Yes, you brought this up. Good point. Go ahead, yeah. You know, he would have been charged with all the counts. They would have looked at each one. And then uh, gone over all the evidence, and then the jury would have said, "Okay, you're guilty of all of them." But what do you think would have happened if he was found not guilty of one of them? Call. Let me ask you that. <laughs> What's the question? Well, what do you think would have? I mean, what, what, what? The question in there is: Had it gone to trial, okay, if he didn't plead guilty to all of them? Right. And he said, put me on trial. OK, they would have gone over each each sure. shooting. OK, he would have been charged with whatever amount. OK, right. and he would have been found guilty on each charge at the end. OK, so what if he was found guilty of all of them except one? What do you think that would have done to the case? Well, I to answer that question, I I, I have to I guess uh, it's hypothetical, of course. But yeah, talk about something else. And yeah, so what if might, if there was a trial? There's a real there's a possibility Maury Terry never would have written his book, and right. there's a, and there's a very good possibility that us four wouldn't be sitting here today talking about. I agree. It. Yes, um, almost all the questions that we brought up today yesterday and for the last 45 years probably would have been answered in some fashion during a trial. So with that said, you know, um, I, 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 I do disagree with Neil on this. Um, I think if he went to trial and my opinion, but, but my opinion is shared by, um, has been shared by many, uh, uh, uh criminal lawyers, um, that, the best piece of evidence they had was what they found in his car, which was illegal, which means it wouldn't have been admissible in court. Now, what other evidence do they have? What do you think? So, Nothing. so if, 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 if he got it, if, if Berkowitz got a good lawyer and was able to prove to the judge yes. that that was an illegal uh, uh, search and seizure, that all that stuff, the rifle, the note, the forty, the forty-four, would have been inadmissible. I know this is hard to comprehend, because, but we've see, we you see it on on TV, you know, uh, courtroom but, dramas all the time. But um, you know what? The guy's guilty as hell. The guy might be guilty as hell, but on the technicality, there's no evidence to 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 convict him, and he goes free. Yeah. Carl, like, technically, that did happen with the OJ trial. I was, the I was, all the I, I was just going to say that too. I was copying yes. all the stuff in there. Guess what? You can't use it. It's like it's illegal. You can't you use it, you, but you man, everyone it. thought he was guilty. Yeah. <laughs> so so Mike, me... Mike, yeah, you're yeah. saying that he wa like you're on the impression Berkowitz didn't want to go to trial. He's just going to take the guilty plea to avoid maybe exposing other people that were involved, and that was he, his point. I, I feel I feel that might be true. Okay, I think that wow. originally he was going to take the insanity plea. Okay. Yeah, I think that was that, his, obviously that was his game plan. I mean, he was that, that was his plan. That was his plan. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully, he'd get off easy. Maybe spend some years in a psychiatric place. Eventually, get out and whatever, and he can live his life fairly normally. Okay. The other choice is trial, or plead guilty to everything and just go to jail and the forever, or, and where and that's it. Now, I think that. You know the illegal search uh, search and seizure. Okay, search and seizure. Okay, uh, 
I don't think he might have even I, – I, I've never seen evidence that he even knew that happened, okay? No, they're not going to tell him that. Okay, so so yeah, he doesn't he know he has that. Thinking. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He doesn't know he has that ace in the hole. Yeah. Okay. He doesn't know he has it, so he thinks he's going to trial. That's an an option to go to trial, and everything gets can get exposed. Things that he doesn't want to come out. Now, could it be cult related? Could it be other things we don't know about? Even to this day, could be. Okay. The other choice is to plead guilty and hopefully, you know, manage through prison life. Okay. He chose that. He chose that. Um, And I think that 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 choice, let me finish. I think that choice shows a lot towards what really happened in the case. Because if there was nothing to hide at all, serious enough, Say fuck you! I, you can't prove I, I I did all these. Put me on trial, okay? I think he might have been afraid of what would be uncovered. And I don't know, Carl. Has anybody ever suggested that before? Not that I know anything. Oh, but just, yes, <laughs> that, 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 your theory has been has been talked about. Yeah, and I, I'm not sure. I, I can tell you a conversation I had with Maury. Um, and, and I'll be honest with you, I don't know if this is this is a conversation that Maury had with Berkowitz or if this just Maury's idea. But what he told me was the plan was to take the hit, pl- uh, plead insanity, go to, a, you know, he'd be sent to a psych uh, hospital prison and they would continue monitoring him and testing him. And after two, three, four years, they would say, he's perfectly normal. We can release him. And that has happened in the past, just by the way. You know, criminals have or people have committed crimes, including murder. They were found um, crazy at putting a mental institution. And five, six, seven years later, they release him. That was a mafia loophole for years. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Chinga Khan. They were using the insanity plea to get out of everything. So right. once so, again, so, I think by the time Berkowitz decided to do this, they were already sick of that loophole being played on. So they were right. so against him going that route. Yeah. So right. now one, one thing we haven't discussed, and I, I'm just going to throw it out there um, to you guys and, and, and the audience, but it appears we all, we all know that he was, um, he was found. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He couldn't stand trial. He, he, he was. You know, he was found crazy. fit. I'm fit. Yeah, fit. He was, he was, found, he two, was fit by, to stand trial. By two psychiatrists, he was found not fit to stand trial. Yeah. yeah. They kept rehiring, and then they so finally found got, They finally got the third, the third psychiatrist, and I believe it's Abramson, who said, "Oh yeah, he 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 he's he's got a little schizophrenia." But Abraham was neutral though. Oh, the, the first okay. two were from his side. Okay. The first so, doctors were from Berkowitz's side evaluating. And so then, who was the last doctor? Who's the I'm one not, that, that, that found them uh, competent to stand trial? It, you, you know what's That's the one Abrams. thing? Okay. So, so right away you have like a little bit of an issue because it, it was quite obvious that the prosecution wanted, wanted him to, um, to stand trial. All right, so it, it's kind of like a cat and mouse game because Berkowitz supposedly is planning to plead. I'm crazy, you know, and yeah. so now they get two guys saying he's crazy. They, you know, yeah. they get the next guy. He's crazy. They bring in the third guy. He goes, he's 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 sick, but he's he he knows what he did. It, he knows the difference between right and wrong, which is the the you know the barometer yeah. for uh, for insanity. So yeah. they, so the prosecution got their way, and what does Berkowitz do? Flip the flip the tables on and said, "I I plead uh, guilty." It was, you know, well, he tried saying? one last act with his. He did try you know, one last act with now, him walking into the courts and, and right you know, flipping out yeah. the courtroom. So now, who who's in the middle of all this that we haven't brought up yet, and that is for the for the ultimate evil uh, readers it's uh, it's Lee Chase for for true crime people it's D Channel same person um somehow that woman got access to David Barkowitz during this period 
which I find incredible. And I, it didn't dawn on me back in the day. Um, but, uh, but looking back, it's like, how, how, how would some woman from the Midwest get access to Berkowitz? I mean, he was in Kings County at that time, Carl. I believe he was in King, Kings County. In Brooklyn, right? Yeah. I mean, even today, uh, I send them a letter. The, the prison reads the letter before they give it to them. So how did this woman get in there? And apparently it was her that convinced him to plead uh, to plead guilty. Huh. I, I, you know, well, and, uh, you know, I did uh, hear that, you know, he did set up all this stuff to plead insanity. Then the doctors were not going to let him do that because they were saying he was fit to stand trial. So what I heard was when he went into court that time to go to trial, they switched him up at the last minute. And said, "You're, you're. He didn't have a choice. You're pleading guilty, and that is why he did all those antics going into the courtroom, wow. okay. screaming Moskowitz and everything else because he was pissed off. He wanted yeah. to, you know, plead insanity, and they're telling him you're not insane. You can't do that. You're pleading guilty, and that was his last. I feel okay. So that, that's stand. a good point, Neil. And and I I didn't know that, but I I, I will I do want to poke poke a little hole in that." Hey, no you know one what? can he make went... you plead guilty. It's you can plead insanity, you can yeah. plead guilty, or you can plead not guilty. Yeah, he chose. He chose. So maybe going. I think. You, I think after they did the switch, he was pissed off. He was just like, just like I said, this circus has got to end. That I'm is, tired okay. of this. You know, it's it, it's yeah. running me through the mill for a month and a half now. I got a hundred people uh, examining me. You know, they're clearly not going to end this nonsense. Just get me out of here. You know. Yeah. But but okay. if that's the case, if that's the case, guys, and I, I totally agree with you, but why not you know, why why not say put me on trial? Would have got would have got a lot of attention using attention mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Why yeah, not point. good point, good point, good that point. That would have been the trial of the century. If they would have put him out It would have been the trial of the century. But you know you know what the problem with a trial is when you get people you, you never know. It's very un you, you never know what can happen. People can swing, you can swing. Could they could they have been, been Here's the problem with a trial. Could could they have even gotten a jury in New York City? You could have had to have to take out of state. The the whole thing would have been. I mean, take take Cost every take every high profile case that you can think of in the last twenty years and roll it into the Son of Sam, and, and oh. that's mayhem you got. You know, <laughs> yeah. you, no, really, it's like yeah, yeah you're right. Who, who didn't know about Son of Sam? How are you going to find twelve yeah. people that don't know anything about Son of Sam? Hell, it was, I mean, it was, even if you weren't, you know, I mean, every, everyone from, uh, I know, I mean, people that were 10 years old remember seeing yeah. it. It was like the leading uh, story on the six o'clock news. And those who were older, 18 to, you know, to 40, I mean, they lived it. Uh, this, you know, so, I mean, it, there's an issue right there. Um, and, and like I said earlier, um, it would have been. It would have been great if there was a trial because, um, like I said, uh, the, the whole thing to me, the whole thing, I would have had closure one way or another by 1985, two years before Maury even wrote the book. I, you know, I probably, I probably wouldn't even read the book. Actually, Maury probably wouldn't have written a book if there was a trial. Hmm. He might have wrote, he might have wrote a book on the trial, but he certainly wouldn't, wouldn't have written the Ultimate Evil. Yeah, it's, it's I, you know it's funny you know I I've never really thought of it that way like what would happen if there was a trial and uh, as I'm talking I'm like yeah. wow it blows your we mind wouldn't even be here <laughs> <laughs> yeah but but you know that, go back to the psychiatrist you know what not a psychiatrist they could have wrong was his military psychiatrist because when you go to the military they, they actually ask you questions to make sure. You're not a psychopath, so right. You could. I used to be gone to his military doctor. He would. He passed. He passed that. Well, yeah. he passed that to get into the military. To get into the military, and that's but, you know what? That's like before you can become a cop, you gotta go to a psychiatrist. Yeah, but, but they tell you if you're Rob, failing that. They already know. They they forecast that shit. Rob, don't make the same mistake that everyone else is making mm -hmm. as far as timelines. You know. He, oh, no, he, I know that. He took that. He he took that psychological test to get in the army in seventy one. Yeah. He did. He, as far as we know, the earliest he did anything wacky was uh, late seventy four. If you want to go with that, yeah. or early seventy five, and that's after three years in the service. Um, and all accounts that that we can tell 
by all accounts, uh, something something changed in Berkowitz. Oh yeah, you know, something I mean, listen happened to, to him. Listen from, to Camporetto yeah. and and Rinciati. Uh, you know, he was fairly normal in '70, and uh, and in '74, I believe it was Camporetto said he was so crazy I didn't even want to deal with him. Wow. wow. Yeah. So that's well, I think thing. so. Uh, I think that uh, this is a, a perfect uh, example of why we have such great chemistry on this show, okay, including with Neo, because you guys are going to f- forecasting what we're going to talk about probably next week, okay, on that show. All right. <laughs> so I, th- I, think, I think we're going to go into some, some of the early years. Some of the early years. But yeah. um, uh, actually, uh, guys, I'm going on vacation in two days, so we're going to have a little break. Ooh. <laughs> I'm going down to New Orleans to roll around a little bit and get lumped up. And, uh, you know, when I come back, we'll do another show. What'd you say, Carl? I said, be careful. Oh, I've been there so many times. I know that city very well. Very it's well. It's not the international, you know. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> the French hey, Quarter is like one big international bar. Exactly. Hey, Mike, when you come back, go come back program, you know. This program is <laughs> 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 All right. All right, so another great show, guys. All right, thank you, Neo. Thank you, Carl, as usual. Rob, you're the best. Uh, thanks for watching the Son of Sam Chronicles, and we'll see you probably in a few weeks. All right, guys, right. you, oh, guys. Oh, one more guys. thing. Go what ahead, Rob. Guys, if you like the show, the orange are there, please like and subscribe. Because there's a lot of people that they like it, but they're not subscribing. But subscribe to the show. The more views we get, the, you know yep. what? The more trolls we get. I just want to yeah. add to that. <laughs> yeah. That's right. All the trolls keep commenting and watching. We love your views. We love we our love views. views. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. See you next time. Yeah, All be right, good, guys. Right. Take care, people. Committed this murder. Now he didn't.